There are actually many other signs that pointed me towards ministry through those early years. But I want to tell you that in, in seminary, many students actually leave after their first year, not necessarily due to academic rigors, but because after a year of assessing and learning what ministry might be like, they then decide that, you know, for them, it probably would not be a good fit. But there was very little doubt, in fact, no doubt in my mind after my first year that I really wanted to continue. It really meant a whole lot to me. I loved the whole, the whole flavor of the seminary experience and, and also trying to visualize myself someday perhaps being a minister to a congregation. In my second year at the Divinity School, <laughs> I even got to tutor some Southern Baptist first year students in New Testament classes. Helmut, my advisor, referred them to me. I think it was his odd sense of humor that led him to do that. But uh, it, you know, it's really an, an interesting um, discipline when you, when you, when you look at the, at the Bible and the text through exegetical and hermeneutical techniques and factor in all the, 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 the context, the history, the meaning, so on and so forth. So it's really, uh, it turned out to be a lot of fun. And I had these two Southern Baptists who were trying to learn from me, who had never cracked a, uh, a Bible in his life before coming to the theological school. But I remember Helmut telling me, he said, you know, if you can't get those Baptists to lighten up about the Bible, nobody can. <laughs> Maybe I, I loosened them up a little too much because through the alumni news later on, I learned that one of those gentlemen actually ran for the Senate in the state of Kentucky and had lost. And I wondered if I was to blame making him a tad too liberal for the state of Kentucky to endorse, but who knows. Well, now that I've kind of conceded that I never really received a supernatural sign to enter the ministry, I just kind of backed into it somehow, but loved every backward step along the way. I do want to impress upon you that a calling, a calling, however, however that might be discerned, a calling summons us, all of us, to be our most authentic selves. A calling from wherever that voice might originate, that voice that tries to move you, take you to faraway lands, brings a new level of awareness to how we want to form our lives. Martin Buber wrote that living, living means to be addressed. And whatever or whoever is addressing us is a power like wind or fusion or faith. We can't see the force, but we can see what it does. For me, it has been a privilege and a stroke of luck that I've had 37 wondrous years responding to my call, addressing my life as authentically as possible and discovering that my chosen vocation somehow belongs to me, feels right for me, and gives my life a lot of meaning. The writer, Greg Lavoie, offers a, a metaphor for a calling that pertains not only to ministry, but to whatever path that certain power may lead you. In stone sculpting, he says, an artist taps a stone lightly with a hammer to see if it's true. That's the word they use when they tap that stone, to see if it is true. If it emits a dull tone, it has faults running through it that will crack it apart when you work on it. 
a clear ring, one that hangs in the air for a moment, means that it's true, has integrity, and most importantly, will hold up under repeated blows. And this is the same information we seek about our callings. And we need to be continually tapping in in order to discern the truth. Now, I'm convinced, especially having gotten to know so many different people in a variety of levels, in a very intimate way throughout my ministry, I've gotten to know that a call exists within every human soul. More often than not, we are deaf to its sound, but we know it's there nonetheless. It's really a matter of moving from no to yes. It's sort of like Jonah refusing to heed the call to go to Nineveh, but eventually he relented, although he got a pretty good sign being swallowed up by a very large fish and coughed out. So he, he, he knew that uh, this call was serious business. But even in this case, it's kind of a model of a calling. At first we want to say no, but a call is really a movement from no to yes. Accepting that call is always challenging because it always, it always requires change. And so we have this innate resistance to hear the call because we know, we know it's going to bring along some trouble. It's not always easy to follow the flow. It's not easy going from no, I'll just stay in my customary routine to yes, I'm going to live my life authentically. Oscar Wilde once said, the gods have two ways of dealing harshly with us. The first is to deny our dreams, and the second is to grant them. How true. In my very humble opinion, however wrenching it may be, I would urge everyone, if possible, to respond to the call because it's really a matter of addressing your life. I just recently heard one anecdote, a, a, a fabulous photographer and for the life of me, I space his name, who spoke at the University of Utah. He, he is well known for, you may know who I'm talking about, you may have heard him, well known for photographing um, very unusual environmental uh, disasters and, and, and it has turned that into an art and by, by awakening sensibilities within people. It's been really strong for the movement. But anecdotally, he talked about how he was a lawyer and he really always wanted to be a photographer. And year after year, he found himself more and more depressed. I guess he kept telling himself no to photography. He got so depressed, he went to see a therapist. And in conversation, the therapist advised him to leave the field of law and be a photographer. Go, go do it. And he said, okay, I, I, I think I will. And the therapist said, well, stop, stop. If you're really going to be committed to this, if you're really going to go from no to yes, that means no safety net. You're going to have to get yourself disbarred as a lawyer. Because <laughs> you're not going to go back to it. You're a photographer. You're a photographer. You're going to sink or swim. And so he went through the routine, got disbarred as, or that disbarred sounds hard, left, gave up his license to be a lawyer. And um, after a couple of years of struggle, became really a, uh, a foremost photographer, so well known that he even appeared here at the University of Utah. So maybe God will tap you on the shoulder, maybe a therapist will tap you on the shoulder, maybe a church minister, maybe some force will tap you on the shoulder, and probably it won't be God because you wouldn't believe it and people wouldn't believe you either if you try to explain it. Identifying the call, responding to it, may comprise the most important decision in a lifetime.